Well, greetings. It's El McMean. It's the day before Easter 2019. And it was a miserable day at first, but it's actually gotten a little better. Uh, I thought of what to do today, uh, preparing for Easter. And uh, I spent the last 20 minutes trying to set this iPad up so that it, it captures things. I spent most of my energy setting up the iPad. Yeah, here's what I wanted to do, though. I wanted to try to make an argument for you to do the unthinkable, which is to retune your guitar from standard tuning to something that seems rather unusual, which is uh, what I call CGAD tuning. From bass to treble, C, G, D, G, A, D. I kind of like a variant of dad gad, at least in the gad part. It's actually closer to open G tuning. But uh, I like the term CGAD rather than low C because there are a number of low, low C tunings, C bass tunings, open C and some others. And I don't want to arrogate to CGAD uh, all C bass tunings. Plus CGAD rhymes with EGADs, which is probably what you're saying. Why in heaven's name, with thousands and millions of tunes out there in standard tuning that I don't know, um, why should I retune the guitar? And that is exactly the thought process I went through for 20 years. Between the mid-60s and the mid-80s, the last thing on my mind was retuning the guitar. The guitar was hard enough to play without retuning it. And I did play in some alternative tunings. I, there's a song called Mole's Moan, Jeff Mole Dar wrote. Uh, his nickname was Mole. And it was made famous, uh, to the extent it was famous, it was made famous by Tom Rush. And I, Tom Rush was one of my heroes in college. And he did a version of Mole's Moan. And I said, I had to learn that song. And it was in this open G tuning, and I worked on it and met a friend of mine in college, and we worked on it. So that was sort of my only exploration into an altered tuning. I didn't even play in drop D. I just hated to mess with the tuning. And so the idea of why in heaven's name would you mess around with the standard guitar tuning uh, especially changing for the strings, which is what you have to do in C, G, D, G, A, T tuning. And uh, I won't go through the, how you tune. It's very easy if you have a tuner. I mean, there are certain ways I get into to it from standard. Uh, I won't spend your waste time uh, discussing it because that's what chromatic tuners are for. But uh, let me just assure you this. There is an 18 months, period of 18 months in my life where I thought of various ways of dealing with this tuning. Did, could I avoid tuning four strings down? Could I tune some strings up? Could I play without a capo? Could I use a wire string instead of a wound third string? I mean, 18 months of thinking all this through, overthinking it, and I ended up coming right back to where I was, which the lower tuning, C, G, D, J, D, capo two, four, or some other place. So you're kind of lowering the tuning and then raising again. It seems kind of tautological. There should be some way to avoid lowering it and then raising it with a capo. I assure you, I thought of everything and there really wasn't a good way. I like the string tension the way it is. The capos are annoying, but you carry them around and uh, everything's fine there. And uh, no, I don't think it's a cheater, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, so the issue is, why in heaven's name would you get into this tuning? That is, uh, as I say, a thought that I had for many years. And what changed my mind was listening to an album. It had sort of a humble name. I think it was Irish Reels, Jigs Reels, Hornpipes, and Airs. Nothing like the glory of Irish guitar or something just some dance tunes and it had a number of very, very accomplished players on it. Steve Tilston was on there. I think Seth Austin was on there at, uh, at the time. And, I, uh, and then a fellow by the name of Dave Evans. And I listened to Dave's playing. I said, boy, I've just never heard a guitar sound like that. So it was about sound at first. And I remember he played, um, he played Shebag and Shamor on there. And he played it in the key of D. Now again, I'm assuming there isn't a capo, so when I play, say key of D, it's sounding in E. If I, if I say key of C, it's sounding in D. Just kind of a, a, 
rise above that if you would. But I mean, I don't even not sure I can play it. Part that went. I just never heard the guitar sound like that. So uh, I was struck by the sound, and there were. Uh, it was accompanied by a book. And so I learned Dave's tunes that were in the book, four or five tunes. And then he had a singing uh, CD that I believe may have had accompaniment in low C tuning. And I may not have learned those, but I learned about five, I'd say maybe five or six tunes in this tuning. And that was it. That was the world. Now, supposedly it was an ancient Hawaiian tuning, or it was close to an ancient Hawaiian tuning, some kind of tertiary tuning. But that was it then. Once I learned Dave's things, I played them over and over again. I didn't play them as well as Dave did, but I learned them. And that was it. So either I gave it up or I started to arrange things in this tuning. And as I say in my memoirs, I believe this tuning was a gift from God to me. It was maybe a loan, a gift, not exclusive, other people play in it. In fact, my joy is seeing the number of people these days who do play in this tuning. Robin Bullock does very, very nice things in this tuning. Uh, Steve Boffman, I believe, has. He plays in a, a, a related tuning, a little different. Uh, it has a, a, has a two-step, or one-step interval between the top string and the second string. Adrian Legg has done some things in these tuning, this tuning. Um, uh, I believe Khaki King and uh, uh, <coughs> Preston Reed have. So people are playing in this tuning, which is a real joy to me. Now my joy or burden is I've probably done more tunes in this tuning than anybody. And I don't say that to brag, I say that to show my investment in this for the last 30 years. I probably maybe have 150 to 200 arrangements and compositions in this tuning. And parenthetically, I have in the last 12 or so years converted a number of my arrangements into drop D tuning. And drop D captures 90%, but not 100%. Um, and also it results in some unusual tunings, uh, I'm sorry, unusual fingerings in drop D that some people kind of struggle with. You know, in other words, I treat drop D as an open tuning, not as a variant of standard tuning. And some people have issues with that. I, I understand that. However, this tuning captures a sonority that I like and has the flexibility that I like and the ease of playing, I might add, that I like. I wouldn't jump into this if I thought this were harder than I want. I, I'm not into hard. I'm into something that kind of is intuitive. It comes under the fingers easily or is subject to coming under the fingers easily. So, I mean, that's by way of introduction, trying to deal with a natural tendency to ask why, which is a legitimate question. Why should I get into this tuning? Uh, and I want to I show you some things so you don't have to just take my word for it. Now, this tuning is, sub, uh, well, let me go back. Standard tuning, a great benefit of standard tuning is playing in multiple keys in closed positions. I mean, we've all seen sort of your, your E position here. Do, do, do. You know, the benefit of playing in, in closed positions, removing chords, you know, that kind of shape. Uh, we can capture some of that in low C tuning. I think maybe more easily than Dadgad, at least in my knowledge of Dadgad. Uh, I think Dadgad, Dadgad is an incredible tuning. Uh, I mean, Pierre has shown the mystery that comes out of that tuning. Of course, Davy Graham originated it. Pierre has taken it to a stratospheric level, incredible level. My friend and former or sometime touring partner Larry Pattis plays in it as the classical guitarist might. Um, 
uh, Doug Young does really nice things in tuning, and my friend Sandy Schalk, Doug's a friend too, Sandy Schalk has shown what you can do with the jazz sensibility in that tuning, which is, I find incredible, melodic, flowing, beautiful, not sort of, not a succession of clumpy chord melody things. He just, he is using that tuning. So, uh, Dagnet has some real, uh, real uh, attributes. This tuning, I think, sings more than Dad can, and I think it's a little easier to find your way in. It's a little closer to standard in the sense of you can do moving chords. Um, okay, let's see. I mean, here, here's a, be a C chord. A piece of that looks like that's kind of awkward, but. That's kind of a moving C chord. Um, the G chord, which is sort of just one finger here in the second string, that could be a moving chord. And here you're playing five strings rather than six in standard. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to do it to comp, comp along with people. So in other words, while I like this uh, tuning for finger style, it is available for playing chords and comping uh, behind somebody. So even though I don't do a lot of that, there's no reason you can't. And as I say, I think it lends itself to that more than does Dadgad, to my knowledge. And I'm not an expert on Dadgad, but I did play in it a bit in the early 90s. So I'm, you know, I have been around Dadgad for a while. So uh, that's uh, an attribute of the tuning. The now, if let's say you were to play in two different ways. You might play, so this is sort of, this is sort of your late 50s rock and roll, mid 60s folk, right? I mean, see I don't do it, I have to think. So that's your one, six minor, four, five progression. G, E minor, C, D. So you can play that in this tuning with closed chords moving around. Move the chords around uh, as in standard. I want to emphasize that. So even though I think its benefit, as I hope to show you, is something different, uh, nevertheless, that is a possibility. Now, why do I really like this? Well, let me... You remember what G, if you thought, sort of think in your mind, G, E minor, C, D, and standard, what that sounds like. Um, in this tuning, in a G chord, you have this sort of simple thing of just the one finger on the second fret of the second string. And you skip, you don't play the bottom string. Now, if you move it one fret to the left, kind of interesting, that's G minor. You get into G minor, so G major. So if you did G, E minor, C, D in this tuning, with a little bit of atmosphere, it sounds like this. Very open sound, right? this capo because it's not holding that last string down very well. So a very open sound where the guitar is doing a lot of the work. You know, G, E minor, C, D. You think of that in standard. A lot of fingers in a lot of different places. doing a lot of the work, very atmospheric. The, this little one-step interval between the second and third string, this is one of the things that distinguish my music in this tuning from what I do in drop D. It's just, you, 
I won't say you can't capture that in drop D, but it takes a very intentional effort to do it. It doesn't kind of fall under the fingers the way it does in this tuning. Like, uh, for example, the song um, In the Bleak Mid Midwinter, my favorite Christmas carol. Plus, the harmonics just seem to be right where I want them in this tuning, the natural harmonics. In drop D, they're off by a step. I haven't studied it theoretically, but right when I want a harmonic, it's just not there in drop D. Okay, yeah, I could do the, the false harmonics, but I'd rather the natural harmonics be available. For some reason, in, in C-GAT tuning, harmonics are right where I want them. Sometimes I have to find a funky one, like on the ninth fret or something. No, but it, but they tend to be there. So that's the key of the key of G, just a natural key in this tuning. And for example, if you're dealing with a song where the four chord is very powerful, I mean, if I take the song "Blowing in the Wind" by Dylan, do 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 do, do the answer. The word "answer" is on the four chord. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. When when the four chord is a pow predominant or powerful chord in this tuning. This low C, even if it's capoed up, is really powerful. Um, yeah. Now, if the one chord is powerful, key G works really well in this tuning, or the key of C, where the C is on the bottom. They have this real low, like a song like uh, Jacob's Ladder. So you have that beautiful low C or cable up D to work with. So the keys of G and C in this tuning are, are fantastic keys, uh, along with the relative minors, the, the E minor and A minor. Uh, star the county down. Now see, in the key of A minor, the song would be... Uh, for Acoustic Guitar Magazine had that uh, arrangement in, in A minor many, many years ago. I think it was in the 90s. And uh, so it did an A minor, and then I did an E minor later, and it did it as a jig, an air, a hornpipe, kind of went crazy on Star of the County Down. But so just a different sound of A minor. Um, Here's an A minor chord. G, F, D minor. So some songs you can play in a different key, like Shebag and Shamor, wonderful song. You play it in G. in 
G, C would be. play songs in different keys and uh, with different character characteristics. Interestingly enough, I've never played that song in the key of D, which is what Dave Evans played it in, that drew me to the tuning. It was really fascinating to me. In the key of D in this tuning, I tend to play alternating bass things. So in other words, this tuning, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, enhances the ability to play in a harp-like fashion, which is arpeggiated across the strings. Like, so I'm running my thumb across the string, and then kind of bringing my finger down, kind of a cascading effect. So, so a lot of songs I like have that uh, feature. For example, Castle of Demore is a, is a nice one to learn this arpeggiation uh, technique on. That's a just a beautiful sound. I, now I I have just simply not heard steel string guitar in standard tuning played like that. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, it clearly doesn't lend itself to that. It lends itself to some other things. It's a great tuning, obviously, but it's not the only tuning. Now, uh, so that's a harp-like a fashion or arpeggiated approach to, to life. I do a lot of that uh, because what it does, it frees the melody from the dictates of the alternating bass technique. If you, when you use alternating bass, it's such an overwhelming, it's like, uh, it's like putting this gigantic stone structure on a nice flower bed. Uh, it, it imposes its will on the melody. The melody has to find its way among the bass notes. A lot of times it's on the upbeat, but the melody then gets subordinated to the alternating bass technique. Alternating bass technique is great for pulse. It's not great for melody. Um, yes, people can play melodically on alternating bass. Uh, please understand I'm not saying that, but they have to work at it. The alternating bass is such a, such a powerful technique, sort of a an in-your-face kind of thing that you know because it's kind of a six stroke pattern for the six strokes are bass or thumb so if there's a melody in there uh, either you're doing it with the thumb the thumb or it's it's being interpolated into the treble strings I like to use that word interpolated for some reason anyway I was talking about talking about key so we talked about key G key, a key I mean G I mean, it's not a lot of heavy fingering in the left hand. In the key of C. Whoops, wrong key. C, A minor, F, G, C. Inversion. So they're inversions, just like standard tuning. Uh, now, there's some other keys you find in this tuning that are a little unusual to play in. For example, B flat, or the relative minor G minor, is really powerful in this tuning. 
Where, what's B flat sound? Again, I'm caping, cabled up so it sounds in C. It's the, the relative minor I play in quite a bit. All kinds of tunes, Carolyn tunes. Uh, Mist Covered Mountains of Home, and it's a gorgeous tune. I learned it, Renborn's version in the late 80s, and just loved that, and then kind of started doing it my way. So we're talking about key of G, A minor, B minor, there's some things, C of course. Now D, D is, as I mentioned earlier, is a little, really good for alternating bass in this tune. Too much alternating bass anymore, but so key of D is really good for alternating bass. All I mean, the key of C works that way too. retreat. So, D, play key of D, E minor we talked about. Now, key of F is something I haven't explored. And, you know, I'm supposed to be the expert on this, or an expert. I just scratched the surface of this thing. I'm waiting for somebody to come along and just sort of blow it, just get into this, take it apart, explore every aspect of this tuning. The key of F is really nice. I, I mean... There's a song called Bridget Cruz. I did an arrangement years ago in the key of F there, just using the open strings, the cross string to pick. Do, 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 just those, those nice, mel the, that's the melody of the, the thing. Da, 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 da
da da da da just sings, sings. And so the potential for um, key of F in this tuning is tremendous. Um, should, you know, I, I had to kind of force myself to do some more in the key of F. Um, what else? So, and, and I hope as you're listening to this, you're noting a few things. One is I'm not, I mean, I'm not playing a whole bunch of complicated chords all over the place. I'm kind of down here. The, the guitar is doing a lot of the work. The notes are kind of ringing out. Now, you want, we want to make sure that the tuning doesn't play us. And so we've got to be careful on what notes do ring out. And I, I learned this kind of in the middle of the game. I, I was so excited about the tuning in the late 80s and the early 90s. I wasn't as sensitive to some of these things as I am now. For example, the, these two strings, the third and the second string, when they ring out together, they're dissonant. And so there's certain cases you want to mute one when you play the other. Other cases it doesn't matter. But as I mentioned, songs just jump out of this. One day I was, I was just messing around with these two strings. And I said, that's a song. Wait a minute, that's a song. Tonamera. song just came out of playing those two strings open. It happens to me a lot. I think it's just these songs waiting to be released from uh, this tuning. Kind of like the way Ma Michelangelo carved. You know, there was a figure, a statue in this block, a statue in this block of stone, and what he was doing was liberating it. This tuning has all these songs in it, and what we're doing is liberating them. One day I was messing around with harmonics. So we're sort of hammering up on a harmonic. Do that a fair amount in this tuning. And what was that? That was those were the first few notes of Shebag and Shamor in the key of G. And that's how I ended up doing Shebag and Shamor. So it started with harmonics. Da, da, da. harmonics work in the melody. I just write in the melody. Duh. Duh. Here's another thing about this tuning that's that's really helpful. You can play in different registers fairly easy, easily because you have two sets of strings that are knocked of apart. Top D, fourth string. And then the third string, G, and the fifth string. So you can go back and forth in different registers in a way that can be, can be intuitive. Um,
your standard lends itself to that so so easily. You can also play them in octaves. Let's see. Again, I hope this is encouraging you that this tuning is it's not just some kind of straight, it looks strange, C, G, D, G, A, D, it just looks strange and wrong. That it's not some peculiar tuning that you use for this song but doesn't work for that song. It's not like a Joni Mitchell approach to guitar. And Joni's approach, which was brilliant, it's just entirely 180 degrees from the way I think. It's, she had a song in her mind, and she found a tuning for the song. That My head would explode if I had to do that too much. I want a tuning that I'm going to play in. Now, maybe I play in that tuning and another tuning. You know, I might play in two tunings. Uh, or I, I might lean to this one, but not to the exclusion of others. But one where I want to adapt the music to this tuning. I don't want to adapt... The guitar to the tune and no does that mean certain songs are excluded from this tuning uh, I haven't found any there's some songs I have a hard time rendering for for reasons having to do with arrangement that's not the tunings fault it could be that the song uh, either has too much repetition too many extended notes or just is not rich enough to convert into a fingerstyle guitar instrumental two and a half to three minute arrangement unless it's in a medley. So sometimes you can take a, a song like that and put it in a medley. Like for example, in Christ there is no East or West. Putting aside the Fahey version, which is not the, the, the melody that I'm used to, it's a rather short piece of music. In Christ there is no instrument. That's it. Doing that with a med as a medley with another song um, would honor it and also be a consistent, coherent guitar instrumental. But so what I'm saying is I haven't found serious limitations of this tuning. There is one issue with it. That when you're playing the key of G, uh, key of C, excuse me. Again, we're ignoring the capo. The root note in one register is on the fifth fret. It's a tiny bit inconvenient. Uh, I will say that. Uh, and standard tuning, I don't think that's an issue. The, the the notes tend to be in maybe the first four frets. Something's in the fifth where you need. It. So that is some. You, you develop some techniques to deal with it. Like if you do a little hammer on with the pinky, there I'm hammering on second fret of the four string against that fifth fret of the fifth string. It's hard to say that. So you get kind of adept at using your pinky a bit in this tuning. Also, for example, an extended G chord looks like this. It kind of looks like a long A, but it's easier. These are off the. Your long A and standard sort of like this. See, that's sort of a, a little inversion of the, the G, e, G E minor C D.
but you can see how the, they're inversions of these first, uh, these lower positions, first position chords, inversions you can go up the neck. So a lot of connection with standard. But then this airiness, this atmosphere, achieving things uh, without a lot of strain and effort. I, I just, I would like to avoid strain if I can. But it's amazing how some things fall into the finger. Like I was, one day I, I was just fooling around with the unison notes. Well, there's my pitch. Man, I've done a lot of books and music in this tuning. And uh, as I say, I'm still discovering things. I'm waiting for the, the right person to just blow through this and find all kinds of different keys and techniques. And I haven't even gotten into per, you know percussion. You know, gotten into percussive techniques or anything that. Is because to me it's it's all about songs, and uh, and other things. I mean, I I I've done some arrangements that are pretty, I think, pretty interesting in this tuning. Uh, Yezu Joy of Man's Desiring, I'm very pleased with. I had to simplify a lot of it, leave some of the bass notes out because I wanted it to to ring out. I wanted it to have a lot of cross string feel to it. I did American Patrol March in this, which I don't think had been done before. Guy Van Duzer. Uh, told me he did a version, and I think I, I heard him play it, uh, or a version. It's more the Glenn Miller. It's got da -da 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 -da. It's got a real groove to it. Mine is kind of straight ahead march, and I also arranged the Thunderer march, the Sousa march in this tuning, just for kicks because I love the melody. Do 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 do. I'm waiting for somebody to take that and record that. I haven't recorded that. I did a YouTube uh, version, kind of on the fly, of American Patrol. I don't think I could play it anymore, but at that time I could, so I put it up while I could still do it. Thunder I haven't really done. So you can do some marches in this tuning. Of course, Irish airs, jigs. Um, I mean... Pilgrim jigs. You could do reels. I don't do too many reels. St. Anne's reel I did in this. I think it's on YouTube somewhere unless I took it down. I think I just played it in my bathrobe. It was sort of embarrassing looking, but the music was half decent. Of course, I've forgotten how to play that too. i got to get these things up there while I remember because then when I lose it then at least there's there's something up there on this, that I actually could play it at some point. I don't think I can play any of my originals anymore. It's kind of embarrassing. But um, and so I've done four originals in this tuning. 
Uh, so, I mean, I don't do a lot of originals, but I did, I did those four. They've done well in competitions and things, thank God. So, I mean, there, there's some value there, I think. But I wish, you know, I wish I'd done 20 or 30 or 50, Larry Pattis-like, but uh, I did my four. So anyway, so that's, that's my pitch. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, I just would encourage you to get into it. Now, if you, if you said, well, what do I start with? If I want to do something, that Castle of Dromore is a beautiful song. Uh, the, the one that's just... <laughs> There's always a chord chart and stuff I put on. I didn't have the patience to do it. Some people helped me with it. Mark Hansen, John Elliott, Jim Mogler, I believe, some other people. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful melody. There are all kinds of beautiful melodies. Give Me Your Hand is a gorgeous melody. Um, Hector the Hero, one of the great tunes of all time. Gorgeous song. There's just a tremendous amount of... Of, of music. So if it's something you want to, if you want to interact on it, say I'd like to get get into it, I like this style of music, what do you recommend? I mean I did Dallas Rag in this tuning, I can't believe I did that. I can't play that anymore, but a few years I quit, I quit. I quit. So I mean, I, I, Stefan Grossman uh, introduced me to that song, he did, I mean, did a tremendous version of it in the 60s, 50 some years ago, it was fantastic. I mean I don't even know what a guitar was basically at the time that he was uh, doing these fantastic versions of things. But so I did Dallas Rag in this tuning. Yay. So, so all kinds of different stuff. It can be done. As I said, I haven't done a lot of jazz. Perfidia I did in this tune. I'm not a jazz player. So I, if you want jazz, do look at Sandy Schalk's stuff in Dadgad. That is, that is tremendous. Tony McManus has done some great things in Dadgad in, uh, in jazz too. So anyway, um, that's my pitch. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll take me up on it. Stay in touch if you want to talk about it, uh, any aspects, uh, um, be happy to. So long.